Hello. Hello, everybody. Sorry, I was opening a drink. It's not, it doesn't do bubbles. We'll do bubbles later. Bear with me. Hope you guys are doing well. Thank you for being here. Appreciate y'all. First time chat. First time in the live chat here. Welcome, Jeanette. We are all, We yes, we all. All of us are glad that you are here. Uh, if you are brand new to my channel, my name is Erin Bees. I am a wife, a mom, a military veteran, and I spent 13 and a half years in multi-level marketing, healed my way out, and now I'm using all of my social media platforms to educate and raise awareness around the dangers of multi-level marketing companies and the tactics used by the reps. We have some things to talk about, friends. We have some things to talk about. Yeah, I'm just reading all your comments. Hang on, I wanted to pin this one that I saw, Katie. Uh, did I? Admit, where is your comment, Katie? Oh, here it is. Uh, yeah, so there's some news. I know you guys probably, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably have been seeing some What in the world just happened? Can you guys? <laughs> it just went black. Let me know if you guys. <gasps> what in the world? Okay, no black screen. That was super weird. I don't know what the heck that was. Anyways, weird. <laughs> so uh, if you've been following me on Instagram, you know that, oh, thanks for the raid, DC. Welcome, everybody that was uh, watching DC. Make sure you guys go subscribe to her channel as well if you're not already. And welcome, raiders. We appreciate y'all. The internet must be tired tonight. I agree, Angela. So I have been sharing that I wanted to get my hands on Prove It's Keto Max product, which was their original formula. And I think sometime in 2018, they changed it, if I remember correctly. They changed it to keto nat. And so what I was wanting to do because of the article from behind MLM.com. And if you guys have not seen that article after this, you can just go and Google behind MLM, prove it lead. And you can find the article. It's very easy. I also, after this, we'll put it in the video description description. Oh my God. And so I wanted to get them tested. I actually worked with Jane Marie at the Dream Podcast. So shout out to her. She connected me with a lab. Um, and as of this morning, I have Keto Max that is on my way to, that's on the way to me so that I can send that along with a bag of Keto Nat, all of it, which is sealed and will be sent to the lab. Um, I'm going to be running a heavy metals, or I'm going to have the lab run a heavy metals panel on, um, I love all these rainbows. I love all this, the pride emojis. This is so cool. Um, stay focused. I am going to have heavy metal panels run on each of the products, the keto max and the keto nat. And then, uh, each test is $450. So I'm doing a fundraiser, which is what you'll probably see in the chat right now. Um, People are donating. We're already 20% of the goal, 20% to the $900 because I want to have both of those tested so that we as a movement have access to the lab documentation. Maybe it'll show that there's no heavy metals. Maybe it will show that there are heavy metals. Um, however, I think that as a collective, it's important that we test it. And the reason that I think that along with the behind MLM article, I have been keeping a list of people that I know of or that have messaged me privately. I'm not going to release any names or anything like that, um, that have had cancer are currently battling cancer um, or know somebody, you know, that has, has had some sort of journey with cancer that also was consuming prove its ketones. Um, I'm not, I'm not making any allegations. I want to make sure that I'm very, very clear in that 
Uh, that's not what I'm doing. I just am simply wanting to take the product and send it to a lab where they can do the testing and they can give us the results. And when I say us, it's because um, I am going to be making these results available for the entire movement. Whoever wants them, whoever wants access to them, I'm going to make it so everybody has it. Uh, and I think that that is extremely, extremely important. Some things that I do want to mention that I probably haven't mentioned in previous lives or videos is on the list that has 12, possibly 13, I think is the best way to, to say that. There are three types of cancer that are prevalent. One is stomach slash colon cancer. Two is breast cancer. And three is cervical cancer. Could it be related? I, I don't know. I just feel like I need to collect this information in the event that somebody needs it moving forward. I guess that's the best way to describe this. We could do this, this lab testing and it come back, you know, that there's no heavy metals in it or whatever, but I would rather know that than not, not just for my own reasons, you know, having been somebody that was in prove it, that consumed the products, but also for everybody else, the people that don't know the people that have been, you know, battling cancer that, that think, uh, let me not say that we're not going to go there mm -hmm. anyways. So thank you guys. I see all the donations. I appreciate y'all so much. I know that was really long winded. The link, if you would like to donate is in um, the video description. And I think that you can see it in the chat as well. Um, and I will do my best to also donate anybody that wants to do super chats and doesn't want to click on the link to donate. That's cool too. Um, I will see if I can work through the analytics and figure that out so that all of the money is going to the testing. I'm going to cover shipping to get the products out there and all of that stuff. Um, yeah, it's a lot. I'm taking a breath for a second. Yeah. I think that it's important that we know. I also will say... Um, I am going to have more than what is needed in my possession in the event that there are other things that we may or may want to test for. When I say we, I mean the anti-MLM movement. Um, Eloise says, and by the way, go subscribe to her channel. She does some really incredible things. She's a pharmacist and she tackles this from a very sciencey. I don't even know how to describe it, but it's amazing. So go, go subscribe to her channel. I'm really concerned. Unknown contaminants along with weird diets. We don't know cause or effect, but it is concerning. Yeah. Um, I do. I do have Venmo. Let me get that for you really quick. <clears throat> My Venmo. Oh, I got to log in. I'll do I'll do, I'll put all of that in the video description, just in case somebody wants to contribute another way. <sighs> yeah, almost 30%. That's incredible. You guys are amazing. Okay, so moving on, that, that was my big announcement. I appreciate all the support. I see all the comments. Katie, thank you for keeping us updated on where we're at. It's, uh, I don't wanna say I'm excited because I'm, honestly, I'm afraid of the results. I, I, I'm nervous about the results and what we're going to find out, but I'm optimistic. I don't know. This is a weird, it's a weird place for me. I don't I, I know you guys get what I'm saying. So, all right. I know Krista. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to drink my, my electrolyte water. I'm not sure how long the testing will take, uh, but I will definitely keep you guys in the know every step of the way because this is something we are doing together. So can we, Katie says, can we hit 40%? <laughs> okay, back to today's, tonight's video topic. Ah, Linda, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate that. Tonight we are gonna, this is gonna be a difficult live for so many reasons. Um, if you did not watch the Clown Towns live 
from last night. They showed some of the video that I'm going to be referring to tonight. I'm not going to show it on my channel. They showed it on their channel. So um, you can go and check it out. But here's the gist of it. Courtney Shortney, we all know who that is. She is best friends with Jesse Lee Ward. She is in Prove It. They just got back from the company event. And um, I have a lot to say about this video. But to give you what was happening, there is a video that she put in her stories. And Anti-MLM has also covered this too. You can follow Anti-MLM on TikTok and here on, or not here, but on Instagram. And she has talked about a lot of this as well and, and grabbed some of the footage as well. So shout out to, to those individuals. Anyways, her daughter was scared of the uh, escalator. And she had, it looked like keto up in her hand and she had her suitcase and then her daughter who is seven, and I'm not gonna say her name or anything like that because that's unnecessary. Uh, was afraid of the escalator and it sounded like Courtney was trying to coach her through the fear. And as I was listening to how she was coaching her daughter, it sounded like they were at a proved event. It's the same kind of culty, in my opinion, weird language, you know, uh, as a parent, I'm also going to give my perspective on this as well. Having two children myself uh, you know, when you're, I feel like, and again, my opinion, uh, when your kids are scared of something like an escalator, you don't send them down the, down the escalator by themselves. You hold their hand so that they can understand, Hey, this is safe. My parents might, you know, is here with me or whoever they love and, and trust is with me. It's going to be okay. She sends her daughter down the escalator by herself and then she's got two suitcases. She's got her phone in her hand and it looked like a can of keto up. And so what she does is she puts her daughter's suitcase on the escalator. Why do we have suitcases on an escalator? Why not take the elevator first of all? And what happens is her daughter's about halfway down the escalator and the suitcase starts tumbling after her daughter. And in the last second, her daughter steps to the side and misses her. Thank God, because I can't imagine the damage. The suitcase was bigger than her daughter, in my opinion. And she posted it on social media and was sharing it as a parenting fail. And I think that if there were, in my opinion, ever an example of somebody that was so tied up and not thinking, thinking clearly in that moment, because there was so much going on and there was there's such chaos. That's one of the things that I remember specifically in my experience with being on this team and being a part of prove it is there is constant chaos. And I think that that is a, a tool that they use to prevent people from critically thinking. And again, this is just my opinion. She barely, like the suitcase barely misses her. And then the next story is them walking in the airport and there's a huge dent in the suitcase. And her daughter's like, yeah, that was scary. And I got out of the way in the last second. I'm not going to be showing that video because it's her. You can see her daughter's face and all that. Um, the live that I'm going to be reacting to right now, I've watched about half of it. And this is her all over the place, number one, but also trying to justify in a very weird way, in my opinion, all of that. And that happens towards the end. But what I, the reason that I'm showing this is because I, I want you guys to see the chaos. And I know I talk about a lot of uh, ways that people try to recruit people. I talk about a lot of ways that they try and sell you an overpriced MLM product. I talk a lot about the language that some of these companies use, you know, so that you can identify them. But specifically today's live, I want you to just focus on the chaos of all of this and the franticness and the, yeah, I think that's the best way to describe it. You know, please do not send Courtney any hate. Please don't go and 
comment on her profile anywhere that please don't do that. I know that the majority of you are not going to do that. That's not what this is about. This is not a, you know, let's, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Let's get to the video. Um, wow. Thank you. Thank you, Annie Lucky 73 for the good cause and to be in the know keto funds. Thank you for what you do, Aaron. Thank you for this. I appreciate you so much. You guys are incredible. Um, I actually had to refresh. So hang on because <laughs> now I have to reload it just a second. And I need to move it forward probably, I don't know, three minutes or so, something like that, because the first part, she's just talking to her son who is in his diaper and I'm just not going to show that here. So oh. are we good? Are, is everybody okay? Are we ready? All right. Yeah, we don't hate. I love this comment. We don't hate. We educate. And I just want to show you guys and give my perspective on the chaos, on the frantic energy, the I got to go live today. And that's that's. Yeah. So. All right. Here we go. By the way, we're almost halfway to our goal. Unbelievable. What makes you scared? Me. It'll get oh, going here in a second. I love vampires. Hold on. I need to fast forward this a little bit. Um, while I'm doing this, if you would go ahead and like the stream, just X out of the comments real quick and then like the stream, please. And thank you. And I hope that I got this to where it needs to be. Me Doubling my income did not look like. I'm going to go back up a little bit. I think this is it. Bear with me, guys. I had this all set up and then the screen went black and I don't know what happened. You hit the details and I don't think it actually works. But as you guys jump on, say hello. Let me know where you guys are tuning in from. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about parenting. I think it's fitting with the stories that I posted today. And so for those of you who are new and have yet to meet me or follow, you guys can drop new in the comments below. If you guys are watching on the replay, I would love for you to drop a replay in the comments so I can say hello to you and let you know that I miss you. Um, you can let me know that you miss me and I'll say that I miss you too. Um, and that just means that the colorful live square button is no longer here. Um, and I get to help, I, I oh. Courtney Shepard, get to help coach. Holly. Oh my God. Thank you so much. Also, thank you for letting me know um, I will fast forward through any parts where she shows her children because I just don't want to show that here. That's not what this is about today, you know. So thank you for that. And thank you, Holly. That's that's amazing. Coach and guide busy moms and dads, uh, but mostly moms, into building six and seven figures from their phones. And I know that that can seem really far-fetched. And that is why, like, for some people, like, they can't even wrap their heads around um, double their current income. Like, that was me. Five years ago, that was me. Doubling my income did not look like six figures. Doubling my income didn't even look like... My personal income didn't even look like half of six figures, okay? Like, it just didn't. That's just where we were at. And so um, I, I love that I get to share my journey. I get to show you guys who I am today. But just remember and always keep in mind, the woman that you see today, I grew into. I built, I built skills to become this person. And the, the systems, what did I tell you? The systems and structure that our entire organization has can you buddy are you staying in here or no okay if you want to come back in just let me know okay i love you i'm glad she covered her child okay but i'm going downstairs okay i'll be there in just a little bit okay i love you, I love you too baby that the structure and systems and truly unique trademark systems that our organization has are unlike any other and they only continue to get better. And I'm really excited for team prove it to really just take off and flourish because guys, this I'm talking about parenting, but I'm sharing with you why I am the parent that I am today. And it's because I joined prove it. It's because like truly, even before that, I was already on the journey of personal developing on 1% better every single day. And that is why prove it became home for me immediately when I joined. So I walked in and I went to my first event and I knew that I was meant to be 
here because of the way that we have truly and like this is crazy because like I had people yeah so I think this was the day after they got back I'm I, I believe I'm not stating that as a fact and there is this saying after you go to events like this and when I say events like this I mean MLM company events there is what I used to refer to as, and many people in multi-level marketing as the event hangover. And because you are going so hard and specifically at proven events, you're jumping around, you're dancing, you're high energy constantly, you're screaming, you're, you know, it's, it's absolute chaos. You don't know when the event is going to end. You don't know when you're going to be able to have a meal, uh, Brian Underwood typically will say, you know, we're, we're going to be done when the outcome is met. And it's just a way, in my opinion, to control what's going on and to indoctrinate people. And so after that, you crash. And a lot of people, the, pri even prior to uh, the pandemic, would get sick because their bodies were so worn out. You're not sleeping a whole lot. You're not eating a whole lot. And it's absolutely, in my opinion, an indoctrination event. And I've been to multiple company events. All of the companies that I've been a part of, all six of them, I have been to company events. So I'm not just basing it on prove it. I'm also talking about MLM events as a whole based on my experience multiple times a year with six companies over 13 and a half years. So yeah, the con flu, the con crud um, and the exhaustion after a prove it event, since that's what we're talking about here is I think what we're seeing and you are encouraged based on my experience to go live and to share the information that you were taught at the event and it comes across as unfinished sentences it doesn't make a lot of sense because the people that were at the event and indoctrinated you're trying to indoctrinate your audience that's watching live in a way and it just comes across really weird and in my opinion very culty especially having watched about half of this live that i'm reacting to right now um she seems tired is this the video right after her event yes so that I was on a call and they were able to hear her in on our company call a little bit and they were like wow like I thought that like the first thing that came out of their mouth when I asked it was like true the fact mm -hmm. that prove it development or prove it development that's actually it yes that's exactly what that is mm -hmm. personal development is the forefront of what the company stands for it's the center of our events Becoming 1% better, the better version of yourself. It's not just about flyers and information and product launches and all of those things. That's extra. Like, yeah, that's cool. Yes, technology and advancing it and all of the patents that we have on it. Yeah, that's really powerful because you have to be the category kings in order to really, truly, um, you know, have something that other people can't compete with, you know? That is nothing but prove it language that she is saying. Category king, that's something that they say, nobody carries the products like we do. 1% uh, better every single day. And because I have learned what I have learned since getting out of multi-level marketing in 2021, now I look at this stuff as how can you measure that? So MLMs have these kind of catchy sayings and it's like, but how do you measure that? How do you measure Courtney, that you are 1% better than you were yesterday. You can't. It's a, it's a buzz phrase, if you will. It's something that's catchy. It's something that's like, oh yeah, I'm going to keep showing up, which is a big thing. Improve it. Show up every single day, you know, get 1% better every single day. And it's just to keep people in the scheme, in my opinion. It's really, it really is magical. But the fact that I have had personal development at the forefront of my business for the entire last almost six years going on six going on year six we are in year six is a huge testimony to why i am the parent i am today and getting to take madeline to the event over the weekend was and is something that I i'm sorry an mlm company 
does not make anybody a better parent. Specifically, this team that I was a part of, specifically this company that I was a part of. When you are too busy staring at your phone, then to be present with your children, that's not making you a better parent, in my opinion. When just the chaos, you guys, I, 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 I'm going to figure out a way as we go through this video to try and explain it to you, because what I really want this to be is like an inside look as I'm translating, maybe, I don't know, uh, the language and the actions that we're seeing. That's really kind of what I want to focus on in this video. It's not about me shaming her or anything like that. It's really like, hey, this is what happens. This is what we're seeing. This is what they think is work. This is how they define uh, or how they encourage people to get to know their audiences through sharing some of these things. You know, it's the oversharing uh, that we see from a lot of people within MLM. They do that, in my opinion, because they think that that's going to help them connect with their audience. And the only reason they want to connect with their audience in this way of, with oversharing is because they want people to go, oh, I, I know what that's like. I've been there. I understand that. And then on the back end of that conversation, they want to sell you ketones or they want to recruit you. It's not an authentic thing. It's, it's a marketing ploy. And it's, you know, who pays for that? The families, the kids that don't want to be necessarily on social media, which was something at the beginning of this, she was trying to get her son to introduce himself. And he was like, I don't want to, there's people I'm, you know, it, I, I don't want to do that, which obviously I didn't show. Um, but I, kids can't consent necessarily to being shown on social media. Also, you don't really know who's on social media. You're posting pictures and videos of your children. And it's like, and I used to do it, you guys, you know, and, uh, it just makes it, it has made me think twice about what I put on social media. And I now ask my children, Hey, is it okay if I, if I post this um, and they can say yes or no. And I'm going to honor that it, because I'm not here to overshare. I'm not here to have everybody have access. And that's a healthy, I think, way of looking at all of this, you know, it has always been a huge goal of mine. I just couldn't wait for her to get to the point where she could handle the events because they're really long days. Um, I, I know that that's like something that we are continuing to discuss in the future, but the, like they're just long days and you know, she doesn't necessarily, it's not an experience that she can even prepare herself for. Um, she doesn't know what to expect going into it. And so, and let me explain what long days mean. So I think she, somebody mentioned like 14 hours, 12 hours, 14 hours, 16 hours, something along those lines. When you are a rank six and above, you're a, uh, you're, the title is champion. That's where you are a car earner and prove it. And, and by the way, I did a whole video when I first started my channel for anti MLM purposes in 2021 on the prove it car bonus. So if you want to see me break that down, you can go check that out. Um, when you're a champ and you attend these events, you have a meeting before the event starts and you have a meeting after the event starts. And then typically Jesse Lee will also have a meeting after the champ event. So the majority of people that are attending the event, it's a long day. When you are somebody that holds the rank of champion and above, it's an even longer day. And they're constantly adjusting to what's going on at the events in these meetings. And it is, I can't even explain it to you. There were so many times that I was like, I'm out of here. I am not going to go to the Empire debrief after I just sat in a champ debrief for the company and then all day at the event and then a champ meeting in the morning. I'm not doing that. And I just, I went to bed because it was so obsessive, not obsessive, excessive, obsessive. That could work though. Excessive. So she handled it beautifully. We grew together um, and it just reminded me watching her experience the event, me experiencing the event through her eyes and watching her, um, you know, she didn't do and participate in every single part of it because um, she's seven and it's really intense. <laughs> it can be really intense at times. But I was just reminded how much this company has helped me become the mom that I am today. And 
When we left and we came home, we were in the airport. For those of you who haven't seen my story, I'm going to share this with you guys from, from a full perspective of why did you post that? Why did you do that? Why, why, why? Whatever questions you have, please feel free to ask. Hey, Meg, how are you? Um, and I just had, first of all, I shared, this is what happened. So <laughs> my cat I, we got off, actually back it up. At the event, we had a board breaking ceremony. And during the board breaking ceremony, we're giving, or no, before the board. A, a board breaking ceremony. First of all, that was a super thin board. But again, a lot of these companies have these types of moments within their event that they call them ceremonies. <laughs> and it's to indoctrinate people. Eric Worre talks about this at his industry generic multi-level marketing events where he's like, you know, believe in yourself, believe in the company. And I think Brian Underwood even talks about that. It's really all about building belief in people so that they can be manipulated and they stick around longer. And that's just my opinion based on my experience. You have to prepare for it. You get your board given to you and you are supposed to draw an X on one side. And on the side that has an X, you need to draw through what, draw, right on it. Hey, Jerrica, right on there. What are you breaking through? And so for me, I was. I've done that twice, by the way, just. Yeah breaking through doubts because that's the only thing that ever stops me is doubt like and then it's like the five seconds that I talk I have doubt and then I have five seconds where I talk myself out of something so I'm like the doubt like I am no longer allowing myself to have that I'm gonna talk I'm gonna, not gonna talk myself out of anything I'm gonna take immediate action so on the other side of whatever you write that's holding you back you put your what you're what you're gonna have on the other side of your breakthrough like if you lived to the fullest potential of yourself, I forget the word, that uninterrupted. If you let, lived uninterrupted, where your pattern never got interrupted by this thing, what is that thing and what would your life look like on the other side of not being interrupted by it? See, this is a perfect example of her looking at her notes, trying to make sense of what she was taught in this chaotic environment where there is little sleep, not a lot of food, you're drinking an insane amount of ketones, which freaks me out every time I see them do this in their stories at these events and remembering that I used to do that as well. Uh, and it, it's coming out like this doesn't make any sense. She can't even finish a full sentence. It, and that's the reason that I titled this the way that I did. Courtney, put the phone down because stop, pause, sleep, rest, spend time with your children, critically think about what's going on and why you're making some of the decisions that you are and why in this later in this video, she talks about how uh, sharing these things, specifically the story about her daughter almost being taken out by the suitcase on the escalator is work. Why would you define work as a story on social media where you are putting your child in harm's way. And the thought process around that, the thought process thinking, okay, well, this is going to resonate with other people and maybe they'll join my team because of it. That is not okay. That, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be very kind about this, but thinking that you can overshare in order to recruit people or sell them products because they relate to you in a parenting fail, I feel like is nothing but manipulation. And for me, it wasn't just certainty that I wrote on the other side. I did write certainty. That was the only word I wrote. But when I'm on the other side of not having any, not allowing doubt to stop me, um, I have more confidence. Mm -hmm. I, and not only do I have certainty, but I, I just have so much more than that, right? And I, I didn't write all of the things because it just, for me, I had it all in my notes. I have it all in my vision. I know exactly what I'm going to get when I stop living with doubt. Um, and I've worked, and it's really powerful because I'm really good at a lot of things. Like my mindset is really strong. And to walk into these events and every time to know that there is something more that I can become, there is 1% better that I can be, that's important. And if at any time you think to yourself, you can't grow anymore, that's on you. If at any time you get to the point where you allow yourself to think that you have become, you've made it, like, 
I actually have so much empathy and I hope that you can shift that because no one ever makes it. That's not even the goal. I was what? about to cuss, but I don't think. What are you talking about? The goal isn't to make it. First of all, I know because I've watched this and I've, I've heard this phrase and I've probably said it myself when I was in multi-level marketing, you know, you're, you're not supposed to focus on the outcome. You're supposed to focus on the journey. And there's so many different ways that they present this. And in my opinion, the reason they say that is because they know based on statistics and data that the majority of people are not going to make it to six, seven figure earners. Like they, like to throw out there, hey, I'm, you know, hiring and I'm helping stay at home moms, stay at home parents make six and seven figure earners from their phone. You guys see it all over social media. But the statistics and data show us otherwise. And that data comes directly from the company. We've looked at the prove it income disclosure statement. We know that that's not true. And so they emphasize the journey because then they can keep people in the scheme longer. Hey, listen, this is all just part of the journey. Oh, you feel like you're stuck? Okay, you're about to have this huge breakthrough. You're about to have this huge breakthrough. Just keep going. Keep showing up. Do you feel the chaos in that? That's what these companies do. That's what this team does. That was my experience as well. And I know a lot of you have had similar experiences if you were a part of an MLM company. I just feel like we need to take a deep breath after that because she can't even finish a sentence and she's some of her team members are probably on it. And, you know, they're like, yeah, yeah, we need to focus on the journey. It's not about the outcome. But then at the approved events, Brian is like, oh, well, we'll be done when the outcome's met. So which is it? Are we supposed to focus on the journey? Are we supposed to, supposed to focus on the outcome? What are we supposed to focus on? Oh, whatever is good for the bottom line for the company at the time. Got it. It's necessary at this point yet. It's not the goal. The goal is not to even try to arrive to anything. The goal is to continue to be become, become, become. It's like, it is the journey. And if I'm ever not on a journey of becoming something better, then I don't feel like I have a purpose or a passion for, for life. So I'm constantly just, I, I learn to fall in love with the journey of becoming. It's so important. And that is being able to be this uninterrupted version of myself. And even knowing that Joseph McClendon the third, who's teaching us this stuff has to grow. Ah, uh, yeah. Joseph McClendon. Have you guys heard that name before? He works with Tony Robbins. He is fluent, if you will, in my opinion, in uh, NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. And he is often at these Prove It events. Yeah, trying to reprogram people. I just, just process that if you didn't already know that. That's who she's quoting right now. He has to grow in order to continue to become an even better speaker every time he shows up. Because if he doesn't continue to grow, how can he pour from a, a cup that he is not filling? Because if you are continuing to give and give and give, yes, you will always, what you give, you will always receive. But if you keep giving, your cup will fall, like will become empty. You will. Courtney, I really genuinely think your cup is empty and you should put your phone down. That's not me being snarky or ugly or, you know, genuinely put your phone down and take a break. Empty your cup. You, I sound like a preacher. You love my message. I love you, Mallory. Like, if you just keep giving, this is what giving looks like. I'm not going to dump out my ketones, okay? Because that would really be sad. But, like, I have given for days and days and days. Please dump the ketones out. Because of what I, because we are about to have them tested, every time I see somebody drinking ketones, I'm like, please dump them out. Please don't drink them. And, again, I'm not. I'm not saying that, you know, that's a for sure thing, but we are going to get it tested and we are going to get some answers. And if you have not uh, donated, you can. Uh, I think the link is still in the chat. I'm not really sure, uh, but I will make sure to drop it. We are 52% to our goal of $900 to get the ketones tested for heavy metals. And everybody will have access to those reports once they're back. Days and days and days and my cup is kind of, you know, it, it can drain. 
But throughout that process, I also allowed myself to receive and receive and receive and receive. So it continued to be filling up as I was dumping for it because somebody else was always pouring into my cup at the same time because I was at an event. After the event, I have to make sure that I keep doing the same things. Hi, Mom. That I continue to make sure that I am giving or that I'm open to receiving at the same time that I'm giving. And I'm not just giving to everyone else, that I'm also giving to myself. Key factor and component in being a mom. Okay? Best tip I can give you from a mom of three, seven down to almost two years old in September. A five-year-old almost after my birthday. He will be five. I will be 34. He will be five. <laughs> Crazy. Yes. I am telling you. Pause. That by prioritizing time with myself, by prioritizing the bubble baths, by prioritizing getting my nails done, which I'm really sad because I've just stayed so busy. They need to heal at this point now. Um, once I took them off, my nails were actually really thin underneath. And so I need them to grow and strengthen on their own before I go get them done again. So here. This is something that Auntie MLM said on Clown Towns. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Charlene, for putting the link in there. Um, Auntie MLM said this on Clown Towns Live from yesterday. And she said something like the nail analogy that she just gave is a perfect analogy for somebody in multi-level marketing and how, and I'm going to take it even a step further because of how they show up on social media, how they present themselves, like they have it all figured out and look at what I'm doing, lifestyle claims, income claims, all of those types of things that we see, they're fake nails, nothing against fake nails, you know, but the analogy of that, and I'm probably butchering that. I don't know if Auntie MLM is still on here and wants to comment what she said, but you know, the removing of the fake nails to allow the real nails to heal underneath, I think is a perfect analogy. And again, I want to credit Auntie MLM for that comment on the Clown Towns Live from last night. And I think it is so perfect for this. So perfect. Here we are. It's fine. Yeah, there she it's is. fine. Um, but I love getting my nails done because it is time that I take for myself. And I like the way that the nails look when I'm talking with my hands and I have the nails. You know, like I like the way it feels. I like the way it looks. It makes me feel. Exactly. I like the way that it looks. I like the way it feels on live video. Yes, exactly. <sighs> Don't come for my fake nails. I would never. <laughs> I would never. Fun fact uh, when I was just starting Improve It. I think I was in Modair and then I think it was in Modair when I got them done. I used to have stiletto nails. So I'm a fan. I think they're pretty cool, but I just, anti-MLM commented that and I was like, I was typing at the same time and I was like, oh my God, that is so, it's such a perfect analogy and she doesn't even realize that she said it, you know? Feel good. It makes me, I don't do it for anyone else. I like the way I look with it. And so um, biggest tip I can give you is you cannot pour from an empty cup. And I know you've heard that so many times, but you have to stay committed to that. You know, you can say it all you want, but when your thoughts break the pattern of the actions, when your thoughts don't align, when you think something and, you know, it matters how you feel about it. So if you think you're going to do the self-care, but then you feel like, I don't really have time for that. It doesn't mean anything like it's selfish for me to, for me to do self care. Yes. It the irony of what she is saying and the chaos that I know happens behind the scenes. There is no time. There is no time to do anything because you are so filled with zooms and I've got to do this and I've got to do that. I'm going to save for a later part of this video my personal experiences that I've seen with Courtney. This is somebody I've spent time with as well at events at Jesse Lee's house or her old house, one of her old houses. And so I'm going to save that for a little bit later as it comes up in the video, but she's preaching about taking time, but she can't even put her phone and her can of ketones down to make sure that her daughter gets down the escalator safely and then posts it in a way that she's trying to say, Hey, I don't have it all figured out and using that as a way to try and recruit people. The thought process behind all of that is so alarming to me. It is. You're supposed to be selfish. 
And how dare you as a parent you teach your <laughs> child that you should be only giving to everyone else because when they grow up, they may not know it yet. Yes, all they want is your time. All they know is that, Mommy, please spend time with me. I mean, he's been in here begging for it. Mommy, I'm in here because I don't want you to be alone. Mommy, please spend time with me. But if he does, and, and there has to be harmony inside of it, like I absolutely am gonna, tomorrow, I'm gonna make sure that I spend some time with that boy. I don't have as many calls tomorrow. I know like. Meanwhile, prior to this, her son was wanting to spend time with her. And instead of spending time with him, even though she's prioritizing, she's telling people, listen, you've got to do self-care and, and all of the stuff, all of the talking in circles that she's done. Her son was behind her begging her to, to pay attention and to spend time. It'll be great. And so I get it. But how dare you as a parent allow yourself to do everything for your child and just be there hand and foot. How dare you to put your child in harm and then post it as a way to give parenting advice when I know you're just doing it to try and recruit people? How dare you, Courtney? And never tell them no? How dare you do that? That's selfish in the wrong ways. This part. Because at the end of the road, they will look at you and realize that all you did and everything you did was for them and it will make them sad. Echo, echo. Hey, Tish. You guys go subscribe to Tish's channel if you haven't already. She's incredible. And I love, I love her accent and her sass. I just have to say that. Tish, I love you. <laughs> it will make them sad because mommy never had anything for her. Daddy never had anything for him. Why didn't you go after your goals, mommy? What are your goals? What do you want to become? You tell me I can be anything I want to be. I can do anything I want to do. What do you want to do, mommy? And yeah, you can say, I just want to be your mom. That was my whole goal in life. You're a liar. And I would, I can, you, we can argue it all day. I'm here to have a debate for those of you. I literally have had someone I love extremely dearly who's on in my organization, who's had this conversation with me and literally wanted to fight me. Like I walked up to her and in an event and she was like, I just don't resonate with this. Like I was born to be. That's a hundred percent prove it talk. This doesn't resonate with me. I'm not, uh, oh God. Also, I want to give a content warning because I know that, that this could impact people uh, that have had difficult relationships with parents or just difficult relationships in general. Um, she does talk about her husband's relationship with his parents. And I think that that might be kind of triggering for some people. So I want to prepare you for that. She does talk about... Um, her husband having low testosterone, which I think is like, why are you, why are you doing this? Why are you oversharing? But we'll get to that later. So I want to give those types of content warnings. It may not impact people, but I would much rather prepare people for what's to come versus not tell you guys. So be a mom. And I know in my heart and my soul that that is what has filled me up. And I called her out on it. I said, you guys, we are 67% to the goal of getting ketones tested for heavy metals. <laughs> you are, I don't remember what I said in that moment, but something along the lines of kind of like telling her, absolutely not. Yes, you get to be both. And your kids need to see you doing something outside of it because otherwise they feel responsible for your happiness and they're not. They feel like you're their only happiness. You're their only lifeline. You're the thing that keeps them going. That is irresponsible of you to put that pressure on them because it's not their responsibility. It's not. Courtney, this is something you should have written in a journal. I don't feel like this is something that you should be saying publicly when you just showed us, I don't want to say what kind of parent she is because 
we all have moments, but like, how can you give out this parenting advice when the actions in her stories showed us what it showed us? You know what I mean? I, I just, when you're in an MLM, it's, it's like you have to posture yourself as the expert in certain things, but really as a parent, you're learning every single day. I don't care what age your kids are. There's things that you are learning. You're not really ever an expert. It's not their responsibility to bring you happiness. It's not their responsibility to live out their dreams so that you can be proud of them. Because that puts, think about when you were growing up, the biggest and most important thing that you can do for your child is to remember what it was like to be a child. Is that what Joseph McClendon told you at the event? Remember what it was like. And you may think that it's hard, but when you get on their level and you really truly get down and allow yourself to live. Thank you for this, Amy. I feel like we're watching her unravel. I feel so sad for her too. Uh, I feel so sad for her. I do too. I think this is sad. I think the, the, influence the pressure to go live and thinking that this is a big like business move I have to go live I think it's sad I think she's exhausted I know she's exhausted because she just got back from a prove it event you know and I think that you know put your phone down and just go spend time with your family and reconnect after being gone for three or four days you know, but there's so much pressure to go live. Leaders show up. That's something that they say a lot. Um, and I just think it's really sad. So thank you for this, Amy. I appreciate you. Thank you, Jen, for the super chat. Through their childhood, you will be reminded. You will be reminded. In the moments that I snap, I'm reminded. In the moments that I have to say no, I'm reminded. In the moments I get to say yes, I'm reminded. I'm always reminded of what it was like for me in my childhood from my current perspective, which is really important for us to understand. And yet, I also know that I'm listening to them play out there and I got distracted. So let me bring it back home because I want to tell you guys really about why I brought up the board and I just started preaching about all these things. And I am not here to attack you. I'm here to be a mirror and a reflection for if you feel a certain type of way about the things that I'm saying. Hey, Tanisha. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, Linda. Remember a few minutes ago, a little while ago when I said um, she is oversharing because she wants people to relate to her. And in that conversation of people relating to her, she's going to try and recruit on the back end. She's going to try and sell ketones on the back end. That's exactly what she's talking about here. She's not saying it th that way, but that's exactly what she's talking about. Uh, what's going on, guys? Say hello as you guys jump on so I can say hi to you. Let me know where you guys are coming in from. I'm in North Texas. I'm doing great. I've had like a lot of happy tears flowing because I'm really excited for where I see us going because we're working so hard to get there. I thought it wasn't about the end destination. I thought it was about the journey. Um, and we have some like health stuff for Joshua to share with you guys too about like, and it's just about testosterone levels and stuff like that, but that's not what this is about. But it's really important to put your health first because without him putting his health first, I'm like, babe, like we've been talking about it for so long, for years of like, hey, he gets going and he gets going and then he gets knocked back down and he has all of these symptoms of low testosterone and for the longest time he couldn't get help and it's literally based off of emasculizing, emascula, whatever, I said it last night. Emas Gonna pause this for a second. Isn't sleep deprivation a sign of cults? Yeah, that is out of the bite model. Behavior control, uh, withholding food, withholding water, um, sleep definitely that yeah absolutely yes this is the part where she starts talking about low testosterone with her husband on the internet escalating men and they're the diets that they put us on like all he ate as a child which we get it you know as parents when you don't have money and the tv dinner started to come out and they were like a dollar something they were like a dollar 43 or something like that or a dollar a piece literally a dollar they were a dollar. They're probably, they're like three, four, five dollars now. Like you, you, Michelinas was like, that was what my parents got. But like. 
this is the part where she starts to go into her husband. I don't want to use his name. I mean, if he shows up in the comments like he did on Clown Town's video last night, different story. But um, this is the part where she talks about his parents. I know she's mentioning his name. I'm just not going to anyways. Um, and the villainizing and it's heartbreaking. Okay. You don't get along with family or there's people that you, you know, don't allow access to your life anymore. That's fine. But to put it on blast over and over again, knowing that they're going to see it. I just, I just think it's sick. And in my opinion, that's straight out of the Jesse Lee playbook. Like those little TV um, banquet dinners, like that's what he would eat every single night. Every night? Processed food. Every night? That, that was what his parents made him for dinner every single night? Every single night. Hi, Kylie. How are you, love? Hey, Bethany. You said that you rewatched my video from the other night twice. It was so good. The message you shared and knowledge, amazing. Oh, Lioness, I love you so much. Wow, thank you so much, Shanisha. <laughs> and so Joshua and I have been talking about it and he wants, he has these goals, he has these dreams, he has this vision. And so as a parent, sometimes you want it and you go for it, but like health shit will knock you down. Like I found out about my adrenal support. I have to take stuff for my adrenal support. I was feeling fatigued and like I have ketones that I've been feeling energy and focus and all of these things from. But then, and then I'm starting to think like, is what I'm doing not working? Like what's happening? Like I know I should be getting energy from this, but I'm not. And then, then I know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> the circle, the, the talking in circles. And then I'm supposed to be taking for take, taking things for my adrenals and I'm tired, but I have, I'm drinking ketones and I have energy. And then I ask myself, well, is, is this not working because I don't have any energy and it's this constant chaos. That's going to be the theme for tonight. The contradictions in this couple minutes was insane. So I started thinking about all the things I'm supposed to do, but then I found out something health wise that like, oh, I'm supposed to be taking adrenal support because I really knock my adrenals really, really hard. And I have this thyroid stuff going on. Like I don't even. And yeah. And what causes or what could be some of the causes of having problems with your adrenals? I'm, I'm not a medical expert, so I'm not going to speak on that, but interesting. I didn't need a diagnosis. I just need to know how to work with it. Like I don't. I just need to know like what works for my body and what doesn't. The blood work is really important, all that. So we got blood work done, found out the low testosterone, and now he's going to be able to get a plan of action so that he stops feeling like it's just him because it's not just him. Like it's not. And so he has literally the testosterone levels of an 80-year-old man. And it can affect you in ways where it's muscle or it can affect um, men in ways of like um, stamina and like... Um, I guess it's literally just sex drive is really what, what they say. And for Joshua, it affects him in his muscles. It affect, And if it's affecting him in his ability to retain muscles, it affects him every time he works out. And then it, he holds weight in his gut because of the low T and he like all of these other things that happen. And so what's ironic about this, this is not me jabbing her husband by any means. One thing or several things that we know that they talk about fat loss, better energy, focus, better digestion. What are some other things? It's been a while since I've said it, you know. Uh, if it's for fat loss, why would he be carrying extra fat around his midsection? We know why, but with what they say that the ketones are supposed to do, why do many of them pair the keto diet with it or low carb with it? Also, another question, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but they have a slim down summer thing that they're doing that they talked about at the Prove It event that all the distributors were buying. And it's essentially like four or five products. If it's, if it's not for weight loss, why do they have a slim down for the summer product package? You know what I'm saying? Kind of weird, right? 
we're so excited to have this plan of action. So that's like another piece of like my emotional side because you know, he's been able to connect with friends over it and really like him and fr him and him and another friend of ours are able to like have conversations through this and be able to talk about like the emotions that come with it. And he's like, how, and then like our friend like responded and was like, who would have thunk like that, that men really do have emotions around this stuff because they do. Humans have emotions. Everybody has emotions. And for some reason, society has allowed them to think that it's not okay to, like, men shouldn't cry. La, 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 la. Which is a huge piece of my parenting as well. So not only do we have, like, this is all about you have to take care of yourself. That is step one. And it, it comes in way more forms than just one. And that is the biggest thing that I've constantly done and consistently done as a parent, as a woman, as a wife, as all of these things, is that I refuse, I refuse to put anyone else before me first, okay? And that may seem counterproductive, but it doesn't mean that when I put myself first, that my priorities on my family being my number one priority still, okay? Courtney, I want you to go watch your video, rewind to this part, and just listen to yourself. Just don't be doing anything else. Don't be trying to do 25 things at once. Just watch yourself and listen to the words that just came out of your mouth. It doesn't change that when I decide what's best for me, that my family is included in that. I don't just put me first without the conversation with my family. I don't ask Joshua. Joshua doesn't put himself first, but we know we both tell each other, like, I had to happen... I had to be born. I had to take care of me and, and find my and become a better version of myself in order to be able to be good enough for our relationship first. And then our and, and my relationship with myself includes my relationship with God or your higher spirit or, you know, like, oh, my God, I'm gonna repeat this really, really fast because this this is this is where she's going to repeat what was told to her, what was indoctrinated within her, if you will. <laughs> At the Prude event. Oh my God, my arms are so sore. <laughs> um, side note, why are my arms so sore? In case you happen to be wondering, I did a deload last week and then yesterday I went back to my regular routine and my body is very sore. My arms are. Anyways, back to the video. It's so powerful and I was reminded of it. And I've read this multiple times. I've heard the video multiple times. Witches call it spells. Spiritualists call it manifestation. Religion calls it prayer. Science calls it quantum physics. We're all arguing about its name, but none of us are denying its existence. Oh, forgot one. Atheists call it the placebo effect. None of us are denying that it exists. We're just arguing about its name. And that covers, I think, everyone. It covers religion. It covers spiritual. When I tell you that you can, you can decide who do you speak to, some people speak to um, the universe. Some people speak to a higher power. Some people speak to God, right? Some people speak to no one because they're atheists and they think it's a placebo effect. Some people are like, it's science. It's, I, everything has a, has a reason of why it happens. And then there are people that kind of cross over between the realms of what I just shared with you. I think that covers everyone. None of us deny that it exists. We all have the power within ourselves and connecting to somebody else or the, the, the neurons in our body, etc. Like <laughs> you have got to make this oh, work. Yes. This is so weird how things, okay. I was like, at first I thought that this was Instagram and this was Facebook, but I was like, wait a second. Um, it's fine. I figured it out. The chaos. I just, <sighs> oh. so you're choosing. So I'm choosing, I cannot put it off any longer. Oh wait, you said something else. Oh, I'm so sorry. I love this feedback right here. So I'm gonna, I have neglected my health and I'm aware of it. But for some common. reason, I'm scared to go because I'm thinking I'm going to hear something bad. So I'm choosing, I cannot put it off any longer because it's selfish to me and my family. Absolutely, and here's the thing. Don't go to someone that you don't trust to give you the answer. Because the people like, just like I said, that gave that list of, you know, 
religion calls it this spiritualists call it that like it, it, it so go to a doctor or a medical professional that you think is who people should see Courtney. Is that what you're saying? That's so weird. Guys, go to the doctor. You know, if you haven't been checked up, had a checkup or it, go get your preventative care, go get your screening, go, you know, go get checked out if you have access to it, you know? I already know where this is going. I think we all know where this is going. This is where she's going to talk about Jesse Lee and, you know, how terrible of an experience it was at MD Anderson. Hmm. Atheists call it this. Science call it, quantum physics calls it, calls it, or um, science, science calls it quantum physics. You know, like, You have to find the right person that makes you feel safe and makes you feel heard and makes you feel understood. So I understand your fears because the fears are real because we don't know who to trust anymore. Sadly enough. And Joshua went through one clinic, didn't feel right about it and never went back. And it's been a long time. And so we could have found out these results longer, long, longer ago. But if he would have done the blood work there, we just found out he would have gotten his numbers and they would have told him he was normal. They wouldn't have given him, they would have gotten him up to 300. He's at like a 253. He should be at 1,000 to 2,000. See now, because I used to work in a lab, because I used to, you know, be a lab tech and <laughs> there's a normal range. You're either within the normal range or you're not. And then you work with the doctor to get you into the normal range. So weird that you're saying that they wouldn't get him in the normal range if they noticed that he had low testosterone. I highly, highly doubt that. And also, what kind of clinic did you go to? Was it an actual MD doctor? I know my friends that are watching this want to know that too. And they would have gotten him up to 300 and that would have been done. And so finding this new, these new people, they're like, I want, we're getting you up to a thousand. Like that's our goal. And here's how we're going to do it. We're not going to do it like normal people or like, like other clinics are doing. Like doctors. Here's what we do different. So at, get a second opinion. And if I can say anything from what I've learned with Jesse Lee is that you have to go in with a strong head. You have to go in and keep, you can't go in. Yeah, you have to advocate for yourself. And if you're not in a place that you can do that, take somebody with you that can advocate for you. Absolutely, I agree with that. Not in the way she's using it, but I do absolutely agree with that. We have to advocate for ourselves. We have to speak up when something doesn't feel right, when we feel like something is wrong and maybe they're not running the right test. We have to advocate for ourselves, of course. And if you're not in a place where you can do that, have somebody go with you. But the way that she's using this is, in my opinion, doing the same thing that Jesse Lee is doing, which is instilling fear in people going to the doctor. And I think that that's a very dangerous narrative. People have all kinds of fears and anxieties already. So then when you have somebody, and I'm speaking about Jesse Lee, not necessarily Courtney, but when you have somebody that has a large following that is saying these things, you know, that's dangerous. And by yourself, you need an advocate there with you because it's really hard to think of questions when people are throwing shit in your face, like literally shit. I mean, how, how would you define that? Just not hearing what you wanted the doctors to hear or to tell you or to tell Jesse Lee? Bullshit in your face. It's really hard to come up with questions. It's really hard to advocate for yourself in a positive way. It's really hard to feel like to even defend yourself because that's what you have to do sometimes. And it's sad. But sometimes when we're looking for answers, we don't always exactly know who to go to first. And Jesse Lee wouldn't have found the solution that she had right now had she not been able to make it to Germany when she did. She almost didn't get to go, which is why all of us had, had planned on being there. 
She almost didn't get to be there. And then she made the decision to go. And then at the event, a guest showed up, a doctor showed up that wanted to help her, talk to her afterwards, schedule an appointment with her on Monday to get the blood work done. She goes in the next day, she gets to see another doctor. That doctor that was just like pumping IVs into her and like doing some other stuff with, I forget what else she did. I think she did the ozone and she did an IV. A doctor that's giving ozone treatments? An MD that's giving ozone through an IV. A vitamin C drop, drip. That doctor ends up telling her, I have, I don't know why I feel like I need to say this to you, but I know someone and I really think that I should get you connected to this person. She, we did not know them before that weekend. It's always we, by the way. Like, I wasn't with her, but it's... Yeah, we know. Do a live where you're not mentioning Jesse Lee. See how it feels. Just a suggestion. It's always we, because we're family. That doctor referred her to the doctor she already had an appointment with on Monday. Like, God works in mysterious ways if you just allow him to. And so when you put yourself first and you allow yourself, like, I have been more connected to God than I ever have before. You know this because if you follow me for any amount of time, I never used to say his name as this, uh, like, I didn't. I kept that to myself. And I would say the universe more than I would say God. I just did. And I don't, I, I don't, I don't. I didn't keep it to my, that's a whole nother story like that, that we can dive into for sure. But I absolutely know that I was, that was where, where I was called to reconnect. And that by, by allowing myself to say like the universe before, it was just me trying to create an umbrella for more people to see themselves underneath it. And now I realize. Oh, so what you're saying is this umbrella that you were creating, you started to add your religion as a way to attract more like-minded people to recruit them. Is that, that's, that's what it sounds like to me. I realized that I know that even if you are not connected to God, it's okay that I am, I'm not going to repel you. And if I do, you're not my person. That's exactly because what I will thinking. never put my push my beliefs onto you and tell you how to be. I am sharing how I feel and what I connect to and what resonates with me so that I can hopefully inspire you to find what resonates with you and what works for you. And so on the I, long story short, clown town, what's up? Val and Gus guys go subscribe to the clown town. They're two incredible human beings. Joshua and I, with all of that, because I was trying to get back to Madeline, what she wrote on her board so I can tell this parenting story, is that... What parenting story? What what parenting story has she shared? <laughs> uh, okay. Joshua and I have worked really, really hard so that we put ourselves per first, and now we put our relationship with God inside of that. And then we bring him and I's relationship as the next important, most top priority. And then our kids. And I, I tell have... you that because they all, in my opinion, go under the number one priority, but that really is the order that they're in. My relationship with myself and God, my relationship with my husband is next, and then my relationship with my kids. Because if I am not happy with myself, and I am not connected to some higher power. I don't feel when I'm not connecting myself to a higher power in some way, shape or form, whether it's before when I wasn't going to church and now that I am, it doesn't make a difference for me. I just needed, I always needed to know and to feel like there's something more out there. Like I believe that in my soul. Like Jesse Lee said it, she's like, <laughs> She's like, I'm not trying to get all religious on you, but this religious on you, but like, how can you not believe in a higher power whenever she got to hear her own heartbeat? Like, not just the stethoscope, but like whenever, like on a, on, like whenever you hear it on the baby, like on the monitor, whenever they're like putting it around and then like, oh, they get it. And like, you can actually hear the, <laughs> she's like, well, that's like where a fetus is. That's why I did that. Not where your heart is, but being able to hear your heart on that machine. She's like, how can in seeing the blood pumping to my brain and to all the way down to my toes, like she's like, you know, she just, you, you know, like you just, when you see it, seeing, seeing it up here is believing. I don't, believing is really truly seeing. 
And so there are things that we cannot explain. There are things that are not tangible, etc. But I am telling you that I know in my heart of hearts, if I am not focused on becoming the best version of myself, I am a terrible wife. <laughs> And if I, and Joshua and I, anytime that we have ever been out of touch in our relationship, we are not nearly as good of parents. So. Did you guys watch the, speaking of fundamentalist, did you guys watch the Duggar show on Amazon Prime? If you did, let me know what you th thought about it in the comments. Back to the friend that I had shared that with. By the end of the event, I know she had a shift because she came to me and had a conversation with me. And I don't remember when it was. I don't remember if it was right after the event or if it was like when we did shares or if it was a week after, or if it was a month after. I really can't remember now because I just live in a time warp, I feel like, these last three years. But she said to me. Wait, I thought you didn't remember the conversation. And now you're going to tell us about the conversation. But you lived in, you've lived in a time warp in the last three years. Could it be the chaos? I don't know. Basically that I was right. She's like, I can't just live for my kids. When she had looked at me in the face with, with some very passionate energy. And she said, I don't resonate with this. I was born and I, I was born to be a mom. That is my calling. And I said, I get it. And I respect that. I love that you feel that way. But I really just want you to take some time and understand that your kids really need you to do something for you. Joshua's, Joshua's mom What in the world <laughs> did she just reset? Please, I hope you have slept. <laughs> I hope I hope that you have slept since this live because this is this is awful. Because we can tell how exhausted she is. Oh, this is the part where she talks about her husband's parents. It's awful. He has only ever had one. His dad never, his biological father never remarried or anything like that. He had like, he had, they, they, he had dated um, other women throughout. So Joshua had other women in his life, but Joshua never actually had like a stepmom per se. So his mom is no longer in our lives. But when, I don't know how to say that because I like, there's like a lot to unpack because I know I'm sharing that she's no longer in our lives, but Joshua and I had many conversations because she would really put, insert herself in our life like a lot. And when we moved to Washington state, she, I mean, even before that, like she just did everything for us. She was like, you know, throwing money at us when we couldn't afford it. Like when I tell you guys we had to borrow money every single month, we never asked to borrow money. She threw money at us because we literally couldn't afford it. And she would have conversations with Joshua and find out that we didn't have any money. So then she made sure we had money. She gave us too much to the point where she was there for six weeks and she refused to not have cable. So then she got cable at our apartment just to watch the news, which the news is terrible. Um, and I'm not attacking her for that, but like the news is just terrible. We don't watch it. So she helped you when you needed it, whether you asked for it or not. And you're villainizing that because she wanted to pay for cable while she was staying with you. What? I don't understand. She gave too much. So it would have been okay if she gave you less. And she, she paid for us to have cable and then she continued to pay for it after we're like, we don't need this. That's so nice. And I, I share that example with you and I don't mean to make it so extreme because she's not in our life. Not for that. It's not extreme. It doesn't make any sense what you're saying. That reason guys, that's not the reason. 
But when I tell you that we have to put ourselves first. But if it's not the reason, why are you bringing it up? It doesn't make any sense. If you go too long of a period without doing that for yourself, you don't have any clue what the ripple effect is going to happen is going to be for your family. You don't. So you're trying to say that his, your husband's mom or stepmom, mom, I don't remember how she worded it, was helping you guys. And by her coming and being there, I think she said for six weeks, that was her not putting herself first and you're shaming her for that when she came and helped you financially. Was this six weeks around the time of you having a baby? I'm just, I don't know. I'm, I'm just curious because or towards the end of a pregnancy or something along those lines. That sounds to me like somebody that dropped everything to help you. Wow. No. Had she known that by not prioritizing her goals and her dreams and her aspirations, by continuing to tell her son and his stepdad telling him over and over and over again, your mother did everything for you. She gave everything for you. How do you think that that made him feel? As a 12, 15, 17, 21 year old kid. <sighs> wow. So how dare you not put yourself first as a parent? No, how dare you put this on the internet? One, that's his story to tell, his experience. You're already oversharing about your husband having low testosterone. Now you're telling us the story about how his parents helped you guys financially in a time where it sounds like you needed it and they gave too much and then she wanted cable and then she kept paying for cable in your household and you're coming across ungrateful and you're trying to villainize you for helping and I'm just going off of this one story this one thing that she's sharing maybe she's not saying everything I don't know but it sure sounds like hey thank you for dropping everything and helping our family out should maybe be in order in this story. How dare you not go after your dreams? How dare you not live up to your full potential? Because your kids need to see you do that. Even if, mm -hmm. even if it is just helping other people. Like your mother-in-law helped you? Committing to volunteering. You don't have to go work a job. You don't have to go change the world and be a, be a world renowned speaker and write a book and, and be an incredible, like in the number one in your field. That's not what I'm saying. Do something outside of your children. I love volunteering. What? Like join your multi-level marketing company, join your team. <laughs> My God. My time. I really do. I love giving because I know what I give. I get, I get back even tenfold. And I know that when my kids aren't as small, I will be able to like volunteer my time in way bigger ways. And I want my kids to see that. I want my kids to join in on me with that. Right now they're just small. And it just, it's like, like, I'm like, we're like, it's like so busy. You know what I mean? It's just so busy with young kids. So Agreed. It is. And then when you add the chaos of a multi-level marketing company on top of it, you end up putting the kids and the things that need to be done with the kids in the pockets of the day and the MLM takes over everything else. Joshua, like just they're young and it's okay that at periods and times of life, your kids are your number one priority and that is all you take care of and that is all you do absolutely but there comes a time when your gut starts to pull you into other directions that you really feel called to do more and sometimes you ignore it you talk yourself out of it you think i'm just a mom i'm only a mom i don't know how to do any of the other things being a parent is enough there's nothing wrong with that. It's not how it has to be. So Madeline on her board, she wrote, I smelled it. What did you make? It smells so good. Thank you. You're naked. No. Mm -mm. Come here. Can't be in it. Come here. Hold on. I'm going to fast forward this because I, I think this is the part where her child is shown. So hang on. I'm going to remove this 
And I'm going to fast forward, so just hang on one second. I just want to make sure. Mm. Conversations with Joshua and find out that we didn't have any money. So that oh, I went too far back. Sorry, guys. You're naked. No. Nope. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, this is where I just don't want to. Also, notice how her husband brought her plate every time. Um, well, uh, is she going to eat while she's going live and talking all the Most of the time, she'll go through this moment where, like, she gets up to the escalator and she doesn't necessarily want to go down, go up, like, or go down it. Hold on. I can still see the kiddo. This is where she starts talking about her daughter in the escalator. So I'm trying not to go too far. From Jesse Lee, she's like, the vice president doesn't like 16 hour days either. <laughs> um, and I think that there's a way to do that. I think that it, we, cause our really, we're driven by outcomes being met. Um, and so. Remember, remember what I said earlier in this live, Brian Underwood says this at the events. Well, you know, we'll be done when the outcome is met, but nobody knows the outcome. Only he does. No, nobody in the audience knows the outcome and what they're trying to accomplish. Only him and the people, you know, planning the event know. <sighs> yeah. And like keeping the energy up so that everyone feels the love so that the last person that has to break the board, they're not seeing a half empty room. Cause like, how would that feel? You know what I mean? Don't rip it. Stop. How would that feel if by the time that you're breaking your board, half of the room is gone? And I really think that we did an incredible job, but I think that if we could just add another day, it would work. Please stop. I, I don't want you to break I it. Was, I'm asking you, please. I was gonna put it in. Uh, hang on. I think it might be 39. I don't really remember. But anyway, there's a lot. Okay. And so it's huge. Anyway, so we land at an we land at a terminal, the term a different terminal than we flew into. So then we gotta get on the train. And so as we go to get, we go have to go get on the train. In order to get on the train, you gotta go up. So she just walks up to that and she just walks right on the escalator. So I'm like, oh, oh God, she was she's already halfway up. She got Undy didn't know the outcome of Ripplin either. She that's a good one. <laughs> That made me chuckle. <laughs> As like a little dance and starts like walking up instead of just standing there as the end of the video. And I share that first. And then we get off the train and then we have to go down the escalators. And so I already, because I got her going up, there. I wanted to get her going down. So I had my phone out and I walked up and she was like, oh, I was like, what? And I shared this in my video and my, my stories. Um, but I was like, what's wrong? And she's like, I don't know. I think I'm just a scared, you know, it's not the same as going up. I think I, it's because I'm a scared of heights. Well, I'm here to tell you that any fear that you have had is because someone told you that it was a fear of yours. It's not actually your fear. What? A citation needed. What is your source? Trust me, bro. What? What? Unless there was something that happened, okay? Like, and I asked her, I said, who told you that you're scared of heights? Now, there is someone that would take her to the playground and would make her, like, they would say, speak certain words. Oh, are you going to blame the mother-in-law again? It's the mother-in-law's fault for saying be careful? Words. Like, it's the language that you use with your kids. A very important parenting tip. Oh. When you tell them... Oh, oh, be careful, be careful. Oh, no, 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 like, don't do that. Um, first of all, all they hear you say is do that. Um, the second thing, because they can't hear don't, they only hear do that. Well, that being said, considering you said, <laughs> when you tell, this is what she, let me just reiterate what she just said. <laughs> let me say it that way. So you tell your kids not to do any, not to do something or to be careful, and all they hear is, I'm going to do that. Wouldn't, wouldn't she, her daughter be willing to go down the escalator with that mentality? Uh, <laughs> okay. The second thing is 
telling them to be careful, they get it in their head that they have to be careful. They don't. Like, Did she just gaslight her poor daughter? Hi, Aaron. Yes, I think she did. And thank you for the super chat. They can do dangerous things cautiously. Isn't that what this says? Teach them how to... It's not dangerous. It's something. Maybe it is dangerous. And I... I mean, what you did to your child on an escalator definitely was dangerous. So... Mess up. I say careful. I do that stuff. So I'm not attacking parenting in any way, shape, or form. But she was she was coached through heights by somebody else in ways that make her think that she's afraid of them or she's uh, scared of them. She's not. She also heard that person say that they're scared of heights. So she's heard other people say, I'm scared of heights. Okay. So I asked her, I said, who told you that you are afraid of heights? Well, um, the little tiny, my big brain, mom. She's so smart. And I'm like, you're big. And then she's like, you know, the tiny voice in my head is telling me that I can't. And you hear me in the video. I say, the tiny, what What do you mean? Or I say, what do you tell the tiny? And I didn't understand that she said voice. I don't remember what, exactly what I said. And she's like, I say that I can, but then the tiny voice says that I can't. Again, why aren't you, why aren't you listening to me with this? It's really, really important to me, okay? Okay, then go downstairs and eat, baby. If I'm not going to let your sister be in here with no shirt on, I'm not going to let you be in here with no shirt on. Huh? I love you. And so I, um, I used to not be worried about him being, I don't know what it is, right? I don't know what it is anymore. I'm just like, I feel called to not have him in my, not have him naked like that around me. It's just, I don't like that either. While you're live on social media, I think that that's great. I don't like that I have to tell him that, but here we are nonetheless. Um, and in that moment, I definitely, when I listened to the video and I actually heard her say the tiny voice, I could, I actually could have had like a totally different conversation with her about like calling it her big voice. Like, let's use your big voice then to tell the tiny voice that the tiny voice doesn't have power over your big voice. Okay. Oh like God. we could have had a different conversation, which we did continue on conversations that weren't recorded or anything like that. And, and so I said, I basically did say like, okay, well you can tell the tiny voice that you can do anything that you set your mind to. I believe in you. I know you can do this. And so she kind of walked up to it and she was like, you know, like an escalator, it's going down. Okay. So she felt like I said, is it, do you feel like it's a little bit scarier stepping up to it? And like, even listening to that, I was like, I don't know, should I have said, cause I'm really, it's languaging is really important. And so I don't want her to think that it's scary, but I also want to make sure that I'm mimicking the language that she's using at the same time. And so, um, I could have said, do you feel like it's maybe a little bit more challenging for you? Because challenges are good. You know what I mean? Um, and so I like even listening to it, I'm like, okay, I know how to get better here. And that is a huge parenting tip is that whenever I look back on situations is that I make sure that I'm continuing getting to getting better. I'm making sure that I'm going to grow through it and become a better version of myself. Okay. And so she comes up to me and she's kind of like, that's prove it language right there. Mm. This. And then she's like this, but I don't, I don't like immediately correct her. And then she's like, and like this. And I said, and she had said something. I feel like. What? We saw the video. I'm not going to play it here, but the clown town on their channel did it yesterday. You guys can go watch that live. This is her going live after her stories where she almost takes her daughter out with a suitcase. What happened was her daughter stepped up and she grabbed her arm and said, no, I don't want you to do this unless you do it with confidence. And she had her daughter's hand and she had, a, it looked like a can of ketones. I'm not really sure if it was and her phone where she's recording for her stories. She has a suitcase and then she has her daughter's suitcase. She sends her daughter down on the escalator and then puts her daughter's luggage on the escalator to which it starts tumbling. And her daughter is in the line of the tumbling. And at the last minute, her daughter steps to the side. You see the, the suitcase tumble. It's got a huge dent in it. This is the story that she's telling. So. Like, and I said, baby, I don't want you to do it scared. I want you to do it with confidence. 
One, two, three, yes. Oh God. I got this. And <sighs> That's a thing that they do at Prove It events whenever they're doing the whatever exercise it is, whether it's breaking the board, breaking the arrow with your neck, walking on fire or on coals or whatever. That's the language that they use. One, two, three, yes. And then you go. And it's just, in my opinion, to stop from critically thinking. It's a thought uh, stopping tool, in my opinion. So at that point, I was like, she, her arms aren't long enough to like reach both of the handles as she's going on. You know what I mean? Which, I mean, if you guys also know MTMLM. escalators, yeah. it's like putting your hand on those actually doesn't make you feel more secure, in my opinion. I don't know. And so I said, I will hold your hand. I said, let's go together. Ready? One, two, three. Yes. And like, I got her on and she stepped on and she was fine. It was like her legs went like this and then she was good. She's like, she like kind of like was excited that she got on it and started writing down. And so, um, I wanted to keep, like, I had my hands, I had so much in my hands. So I was going to set her suitcase on. I don't know why I did this. This is so ridiculous. Okay. I don't know why I did this. I didn't do it when we went up the escalator. I don't know why I thought to do it when we went down. Why not take the elevator? If you have your hands full, you have a child who has their luggage, you have your luggage, why not just take an S or take the elevator? Because there's signs on the escalator that say, don't take your luggage on the escalator for reasons like this. And I know that when you put the suitcase on the escalator, if it's not positioned perfectly correct, that it will like, it'll tip it, it'll tip it. And that's exactly what happened. No, you're not supposed to have luggage on an escalator. That's why that happened. And so, and then I look afterwards, I'm like, I don't understand. Like, why didn't I run after it and try to stop it? I don't know why I didn't do that. Like, but I probably because I had just heard the message that you can't always just save your kids. They have to figure it out. You have to let them space and time to figure things out on their own. And so, yes, I caused the turmoil, but I, I don't know what happened to me in that moment because looking at the video, Joshua even said, I would have ran after it. I'm like, I know, I don't know what happened. I mean, I would have done something, but I wouldn't have put one. I wouldn't have put my. This is just my opinion. I would not have put my child by themselves on an escalator. Her child, I think, is seven. I would have been right there next to that child just to be safe. However, if I knew I had a bunch of luggage, I would have just taken an elevator, even if it required me to walk further for the safety of all of us. That's what I would have done. But the thought process and, and her deciding to post this on social media is like. <sighs> I literally could have like, I could have, instead of, I literally could have stopped it because I have cat like reflexes. I could have stepped onto the escalator myself, grabbed it, rode down the. No, you know why you couldn't have done that? Because you had a can of ketones in one hand and your phone in the other. What hand would you have grabbed that suitcase with? That's not true, Courtney escalator with it rode back even i i have the power to even get it situated turn around and run back up the escalator like that's how good i am at it i know that i could have turned around and run back up the escalator gotten to the top and got my stuff or rode down the escalator and rode back up no. the escalator and got my stuff and taken it down but that's not what happened what had happened was the suitcase flies down the escalator at my seven-year-old yeah and then another parenting like kind of thing that i'm like thinking about afterwards i'm like I shouldn't have said what I didn't want her to do. I actually was talking to somebody else because I heard them say something. I'm like, don't stop it. Okay. Like, so that was the, I don't I think no, that's no, what no. I said. I don't remember. Actually. No, no, no. What you said was for your seven-year-old to stop the suitcase that was tumbling. The suitcase was bigger than your kid. And in the video that you posted, you said for her to stop it. can't think now, but I think I said, don't stop it. Like, don't grab it. Don't worry about it. Um, but what I should have said is just like step to the left, move. But then I didn't want, I, I think there's a reason for that. Cause she probably would have gotten confused on direction. And honestly, if it would have freaked her out and I would have traumatized her, I don't know that I would have shared this, but I didn't. She looked up, she goes, mom, it's flying at her. And she steps over and she's like, oh my gosh. And the smile's still on her face the whole time. And I'm like, just leave it. It's fine. And then the guy picks it up and I'm just like, oh my gosh.
I did not just do that. What the hell? And there's so many things that I know to do better for. Next, I mean, hopefully there's no next time on that one, let's be honest. But I know that there's so many things for me. I learned so many things and that I was like, I even recognized my pattern, link, my languaging that I used. And that, there's so many tips inside of this that I hope that you're getting. And even more that I'm not stopping to explain. Because language is so important. And what we, what we say to them is what, like, doesn't, they don't hear, don't, can't, shouldn't, won't, do like, they don't hear that stuff. So what you expect them to do is what you should share with them. Instead of saying, don't jump on the couch, you need to say, can you, uh, like, please sit down on the couch. Put your butt on the seat. Or go jump on the trampoline. You tell them where you want them to go. You guide them to what you want them to focus on. If you tell them what you don't want them to do, that is exactly what they will focus on. And at the end of the, I get down to the bottom of the escalator and I already knew she was like in a good mood. And I said, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that to you. I am so sorry. She's like, it's okay. I was like, were you scared? Like, did that scare you? She goes, no. I and this was all in her stories. So instead of, hey, I made a mistake, I shouldn't have done that, I'm sorry, are you okay? And having this moment with her child privately, she records the whole conversation and puts it in her stories. I just stepped to the side and there it goes. She goes, but oh my gosh, mom, you dented my suitcase. Like there's a dent in it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I know. <laughs> oh no. And so then I, after that conversation, as we started to walk, I then started to record her and I said, what did, I said, what did you have to say to me? Or was that scary? I kind of like repeated the question. She goes, yes. I mean, no. I'm like, you told me it wasn't. She's like, but I did feel like it's excited and a little scared. And like, I, so she was like walking me through it of like her feelings and her emotions. And then we had a conversation about it and I'm just like, you know, we, I don't remember exactly everything else that we said after that, but it's just the feedback that I got from sharing that is why I wanted to share it with you now. And that is because I had so many people come to me and say, thank you so much because you can't say the wrong thing to the right people. Oh my God. Just like you can't say the right thing to the wrong people. And so when I post this in a reel, <laughs> I know that there's going to be a lot of people that they're going to look at it. They're going to be the wrong people on the video watching it and get. <laughs> the only reason she's saying that is this is us versus them mentality, which is also out of the bite model. And the people that are going to understand why I'm, I'm posting this are going to get it. Everybody else is just a hater. That that's essentially what she's doing here. Thing exactly oh out of it all of the things that i said to myself and why didn't you just catch it why did you just let it go how are you even still recording this like they're just going to be naysayers and nobody said that in my inbox not a single one if they thought it they didn't have the balls to type it okay and so every single person that sent me a message had positive feedback positive reinforcement it, <laughs> like just celebrating madeline for her confidence celebrating madeline for everything that she did throughout the entire video, her, her energy and the way that I spoke to her and saying as an example that I shared in my stories, it was like, they said, <laughs> I'm sure people had the balls. She probably just deleted it. They said, I'll block them. <gasps> it's such a beautiful moment. What? And it made me so emotional because if I had only been talked to that way as a child, man, this world wouldn't be able to handle me. Ha ha. ha. It was because I had sent a voice message. I was like, thank you so much. Cause like I totally overthought me even posting that, but because Madeline wasn't traumatized by it, um, I was able to share it with you guys. Um, cause I, I don't share things that she wouldn't want me to share. And I feel like if it was a traumatizing moment, she would have been like, no mom, I don't want that posted on the internet. Um, and I immediately started crying when I read that because I relate to that. You know, like my mom didn't, I didn't have my dad. My mom didn't know, have the resources that I have. My mom wasn't exposed to things the way that I was exposed to. You know, like I understand that in a totally different way. 
And she said it was a beautiful example of how to be firm and speak confidence into our kids without force. I just loved it so much and it inspires me to take a step back and evaluate how I parent too. I had multiple other people that actually sent voice messages sharing how they've watched me grow as a parent, how proud they are of me, how much um, I inspire them. And I was just like crying. I was like, you're going to make me cry. Oh my gosh, there it is. Like, um, she said, I've just watched you grow so incredibly as a parent over the last year and a half, especially. And I was like, oh my God. How often, first of all, do we have these thoughts about people that really like, they change our lives and they make a massive impact and then we don't tell them first of all. Um, and so I'm so grateful and every time I'm so appreciative. That, that's her, in my opinion, asking for people to message her to let her know, hey, this was a good decision for you to share this. It's not a good decision. It wasn't a good decision at the top of the escalator and I don't think it was a good decision to post it either uh, for so many reasons that have already been discussed in the comments of the people who do take the time to share those, share that feedback with me. And then this person here, a lot of it was, was voice messages again, cause I sent a voice message, but they put OMG and a crying face when it happened. And I know what their thoughts were, but I told them, I was like, I second guessed putting this on the internet. And they said, no, I thought she did amazing. And I don't think, I don't think any of my following me is gonna know her voice. She's gonna play the voice message. I'm sitting here going, it was amazing. She's so freaking strong. I was crying at her talking about the little voice in her head. And uh, I just love the way that you guys are parenting. It makes my heart sing. And then she starts crying. Oh my gosh, she's so freaking brave. And so the other one on here was um, before that, before. Do you guys hear Stormy? She's in the hallway outside of my room. <sighs> She's like, am I here by myself? No, I'm in here. I'll come see you in a minute. <laughs> she had sent that, that message that I just read to you. Her immediately reply was crying and laughing at the same time. This was so beautiful. Thank you for what? sharing laughing at a kid almost being taken out by a suitcase on the escalator is is funny that's not funny that could have ended so differently she just sent another message oh, i just saw it it's so sweet <laughs> I, i'm not like rolling my eyes i'm just like it's it was just her pouring more love into me but it wasn't it, i mean it was still about that conversation but, and i don't I share this with you guys so that, first of all, I know it's scary sometimes to post on the internet and get vulnerable with people. <laughs> but when I do that, every single time, I get more feedback than I anticipate. And So you're posting things like that to trigger some sort of an emotional response to entice people to message you and get in your inbox. Sounds like shock marketing to me. Most of the time, especially when I do it in my stories, not necessarily as a reel <laughs> or a TikTok, but when I do it in my stories, people, my friends respond and reach out to me. And you guys share with me how much it inspired you and it meant a lot to you. And then you give me, you get, you breathe life into me based on the, the experience that I personally had that I shared with you and how it made you feel, which makes me feel even better about sharing it because it's like I said, Becoming the best version of myself as a parent really took me exposing myself in multiple different situations. It, it truly, truly did. So um, I'm so grateful for the, the person that I've been able to become. I'm so grateful for the way that my kids have grown. I wonder if I could get Madeline to come up here if she's eating and ask her. Hey, Madeline! Madeline! If she shows her daughter, I'm actually, anybody that's watched this all the way through, does she show her daughter at this point? Because I didn't get through this earlier. Yeah, she could be doing, yes, she could be doing this live from a hospital bed right now. Yeah. 
Hold on. I think she's going to show her kid. I'm going to remove this for just a second and like fast forward it. And see if I can see. I'm going to finish up this live. I just didn't know if you wanted to say something about. Okay. I can't miss the show. Oh, we didn't pause it. I did. Okay. Well, do you have. Hey, ha Remember when she said that they didn't eat cable and she was villainizing her mother-in-law for buying cable? And now her child is like, hey, uh, I can't miss my show. And she's like, oh, he didn't pause it? Maybe it's not cable they're watching. I don't know, but interesting. Wait a minute. I have a question. Oh, my gosh. We can. You press play. We'll rewind it. I know you love it. It's such a good movie. We'll rewind it. Oh, it's a movie. I want to watch, watch that part, too. Okay, I just have one question, then you can run down there and have them rewind it, okay? How okay, you can go. You don't have to stay. Go, go, go. It's okay. Thank you. I love you. I love you. Thank you for coming up here. Okay. Okay, well, I, I didn't know how that would go, because she literally was watching, like, a movie she's so excited to watch, and I'm surprised she actually said that she would come up here. Um, but our relationship is just so different because throughout these times we constantly have conversations. I check in on her feelings and because of the way that I treat her, she knows, has a better understanding of how to talk to me and treat me in situations too. And so just like that, like even though she was upset about the thing, she still wanted to slow down and say, she still wanted to say, okay, thank you. Like, oh, it was so great to meet you too. I love that. seeing if I missed any other comments. It was so great meeting you too. You were able to reverse Hashimoto's diagnosis a year ago. <gasps> yes, share with me. Men need to know it's okay to talk about low T issues. Yes, for sure. Kid cuisine, bro. Vomit with the little brownies and stuff. I don't know if you're still on here, but I'm just not seeing your messages or able to read them. So anyway, I, I just loved... Um, I just, I, I just wanted to share more of that with you and in the experience. And I was hoping I could get some of her like perspective on it. Cause I don't want to speak for her, but I've just watched her shift in, in this world in so many different ways, shapes and forms. And I just think it's really, really powerful. And the exposure is really all it takes to shift our children to, Hey Elizabeth to shift our children, to shift ourselves. And the more that you have a desire to grow and take action behind it. <laughs> Sorry. What in the Brian Underwood is happening here? And if you've been to a Prove It event, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This over the top language, the talking in circles. <laughs> I'm laughing because, not because of the situation. I'm laughing because I'm like, <laughs> this isn't even the person she used to be that prove it has completely taken over. Jesse Lee has completely taken over. She doesn't even talk like herself anymore. And I'm laughing because it's uncomfortable. I'm not laughing, like making fun of her. I'm laughing because I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> oh, um, the more that you can create whatever you set your mind out to creating. And that's exactly what we've done with our family. That's exactly how we parent. <laughs> it's just how we show up in life and in everything that we do. And we're literally just continuing to get better and better and better and better and better at it. Um, and even when I look at that video, again, when I, when I watch that moment, it's not a perfect moment. And you, you get what you, what you look for. What? So the people that are looking for, oh my gosh, she's so strong and she's so empowered and she's so calm. This is you just trying to gaslight people that are watching the video. We saw what we saw because you posted, you took the video, you did nothing. Your kid got out of the way. Thank goodness. And now you're trying to gaslight people saying they're the wrong people to see your, your real or whatever. Courtney. <laughs> and I love the way that you were able to have the conversation with her but then some people are going to be triggered by it and they're going to find fault in it and we're not triggered by it it was unsafe 
and it was dangerous for your child. Even so much as that situation where I've just explained to you my side of it. If you haven't seen it, you can go to my story and watch it. And you can act like. If you guys want to see the video, you can go see it on the Clown Towns channel. They did a live stream last night where they showed the video. You can also follow Auntie MLM on TikTok and Instagram. She also has reacted to the video. So those are the two places that I know of. Um, where if you want to see the video of the escalator and of course support those creators as well, subscribe, like interact, that kind of thing. Um, but th those are the areas that you can see it. I hope that you can see like if it can be misunderstood, it will. And for those with, if you, you get what you focus. And exactly how can we misunderstand the video that you posted, the video you took and then posted, how can we misunderstand that? It's not like we're reading a paragraph in like old English or something where we can misconstrue what we're reading. We are watching the video that you took and posted on social media. There's no way for us to misinterpret that. So if people are looking for it to be a negative thing, that's what they're going to get. And if they look for it to be a positive thing, that's what they're going to get. So um, don't allow yourself to not share your experiences just because of fear of of what things could be said because the right people will be inspired by your actions and inspired by what you've done and how you you go through life and all of the things and I know it can be scary and I know it can be intimidating and um, I just want to let you guys know that no matter if you agree with everything that I've said or not I promise you that you're doing a great job as a parent and know that it's not easy it's not supposed to be. They're humans. They have their own minds. They have their own actions that they take. They're supposed to challenge you. They're supposed to make you question everything. You're not supposed to get along all of the time because you're supposed to grow too. They're going to expose you. The irony of that last statement, you're not supposed to get along all the time. So what happens when people don't agree with you? You block and remove people, allegedly, of course you and all of your flaws and your insecurities and all the things and they're going to trigger oh you and they're going to interrupt your thoughts <laughs> and they're going to make you doubt things thanks nikki and what you just have to do is always focus on becoming one percent better admitting when you're wrong really important admit when you're wrong apologize when you hurt them admit when you're wrong but then spend the rest of the life defending what you did and truly just commit to figuring it out together and inspiring them to do more or inspiring them to become more, not forcing them to or telling them they have to, but inspiring them to do so, inspiring them to do so through your own actions, right? I feel like we need to pause this in, you know, to allow her to get it together mm -hmm. and let's do some bubbles, shall we? ASMR moment. I know that I we're, we're towards the tail end, so I apologize that I waited so long to do this. But this is a, a polar seltzer, it's seltzer water, cranberry lime. We're going to do an ASMR moment. If it's not your jam, just turn the volume down. And then we'll come back and we'll finish out the video. OK. All right. Here we go. This is going to be a good one. I can already feel it. That was really good. How was it for you guys? <laughs> we need a fluff moment. Luna. Luna's. Well, she's out cold, you guys. Luna. Come here, mama. Come here. Well, that's a big yawn. Come say hi. Come here. Come here. You guys want to hear a, a quick story about Luna? Come here, mama. Um, at night when we go to bed, I have taught her to lay down on my chest. Isn't that cool? I'll get a video and I'll put it in my stories at some point. Come here. Come here. Everybody wants to say hi. They haven't seen you in a while. Come here. Ooh, she's a big kitty. Stretch. Come here. Hold on, guys. Come here, mama. Oh, big stretches. You were sleeping. Come here. Hi. What are you doing? Okay, come here. 
I know we haven't done this in a little bit. Hi, honey. <sighs> She's got to have her paw on my face. Also, let's get a fundraiser update. Let me refresh. Guys, we're at 75% of the goal. So that's incredible. Thank you, guys. And I know that we I have some super chats, too, that I'm going to obviously put towards that as well. Hi, honey. What are you doing? Can you hear her purring? Let me get closer. Lunita. Hi, mama. Can you hear the purring? Let me know. Just curious. Hi, honey. Look at her little toe beans. You got itchy? I know, she's, she's perfect. Huh. You're perfect. She's a pretty girl. <laughs> Toe beans for everybody. Do you ever think, oh my God, this could be me? Yeah, often, actually. I say that often. She's such a pretty girl. You cozy? Okay, let's play the video. If I can do this one-handed, hold on. Okay. Oh my goodness. So if you are not, if you're only just prioritizing them and giving everything to them, that oh, puts too much pressure. We have a super chat. Thank you for this super chat, Ian. I'm trying to click on the comment with my left hand. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I gotta put you down. Sorry, baby. I'll hold you a little bit. The cat hair off. Okay. I couldn't click on this <laughs> with one hand. Um, Anne says, serious question. Is she always this scattered? Are the ketones or allegedly lead affecting her brain? She cannot seem to follow uh, a thought. I think that there's a number of things possibly going on. Um, I think typically she is, she, she is a little bit scattered, but I think she's exhausted coming back from uh, an event. And... Um, so I think that that's a big part of it. I think, yeah, I think that's all I want to say about that. But thank you for this super chat. I appreciate it. And thank you guys for all of the donations. We're at 80%, which is incredible. And I can get everything sent off. And it's going to be really cool to have the information. Also, thank you for this, Ruby. Luna deserves all the treats. I will make sure I give her some after this just for you, Ruby. Thank you. Pressure on them. So just always keep that in mind. I am greater than circumstances is what my shirt says. And if you guys are, yes, I, yes, I was um, talking about. Um, These MLM events are absolutely nuts. So you go to the event, there's different merch that they put out every single day, which entices people to go to the stores and spend more money. And keep in mind, this is a demographic of people. We know from the income disclosure statement that Prove It has put out that the majority of people are not making any money. So they're going to the event, they're paying to get there, they're paying for the ticket, they're paying for you know lodging and food when they do get a chance to eat. And then they're enticed every day to visit the Prove It store to buy swag and merch and different things like that. It's completely chaotic. I know, shocker, but it is. Um, and then there's typically some sort of a product or some sort of a bundle uh, that they are encouraged to purchase at the event. And then they're encouraged to also buy tickets for the next event at a, at a discounted rate. So that's probably a shirt she picked up at the event. It's nuts. Tobin tax. I love that. I love the term Tobin tax. That's really cool. Thank you for this. I appreciate Lynn's. Lynn's McKins. That's a cool screen name. I, I packed trials last night. Those are still available. Thank you for asking. Um, I appreciate you. And yeah, you guys are. Randy, did we ever meet at GoPro? Did we? I'm just curious. Those of you that were kind of, I think I saw some questions about, because um, I said, Slurp that up. It's for ketones. Did she just lick that notebook? Or whatever that was? That is sticky. Oh, here's a towel. Look at that convenience over here. 
Um, oh my God, 81%, you guys. <sighs> it has never been a better time to link arms with us in business. I can pin these. I don't know why I'm asking about the kits. It's all in the link in the bio and you guys can go through. It'll take, um, you know, whenever you have five minutes to learn about what we do. Or you could click on this link and it will help us to get ketones tested, both the old version of uh, ketones, Keto Max and also Keto Nat, tested for heavy metals so that publicly we can have that information which I think could be important. So that's how you can do that. Do <laughs> It's the first link in the bio of how I make money. And you can also learn about the ketones there. Um, again, this is a huge piece of the exposure that has, has created the parent I am, the wife I am, the person speaking before you. Like I built skills to become this person. And it truly was through this opportunity that changed everything for me. Um, and I had to do it. It's not easy. It's not simple, but I took action and I committed to it. And I was, I'm absolutely 1000% committed to becoming 1% better every single day. And that has never changed no matter what. And I love that I get to bring people on this journey. I get to share, you know, like even, even posting that on the internet, that was a piece of me. Oh working my God. Because that guys. built stronger. Uh, we just jumped to 92%. What? Also, uh, I understand that not everybody is in a place that they can donate. If you just want to share the link, that is incredible. If you want to, you know, put it in your stories or, or whatnot, um, sharing is just as important as donating. <sighs> you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. This is a big deal. Community and connection and people are so like confused on like, I don't have friends. I don't have a network. You just need to share stuff with them. Like they just want value from you. Yeah, and by me Joe, sharing that experience, it made people laugh, which still brought value. It made people cry because of the way that I was speaking to my daughter, still bringing value. And it got people to respond to me and create connections with me on an even deeper level because of the, of the conversations I just shared with you, like that really creates wow. deep, meaningful connections. And that had nothing to do with business, but it has everything to do with business because people buy from people they know, people they like, and people they trust. And the more that you show them your life and who you really are, especially as like, as a parent, like that's really who I am. People can see who they want to do business with in any shape or form. Like I don't want to pour my money into people. After oh my God, you guys. <gasps> we made the goal <laughs> in one live stream. Oh my God. Oh my God. Thank you guys so much. I'm saying thank you. Like this isn't like benefiting me financially, obviously this is going to get the ketones tested and that's really, really important for so many reasons, but oh my God, thank you all. This is amazing. I will figure out um, if there is, uh, that's insane. If there is more money that comes in, I will figure out something else to do with it. Um, I'll use it for shipping shipping the product to them. But then if it's even more than that, I'll figure out something to do with it. Also, I want to apologize to you guys because I did a fundraiser last month. And in all the craziness of my husband having his surgery and all of that, I forgot to update you. So I will be updating you. I'll put a community post up so that you guys can see everything. And I'll also update you in my stories after this. I apologize. Uh, I'm normally a lot better when it comes to that stuff, uh, just the, my husband having shoulder surgery and all of that stuff really threw me through a loop. And I was, I'm glad that I was able to just focus on him and helping out and all of that stuff. So I apologize, um, for that, for not updating you guys. And I just want to thank you guys sincerely for contributing to this fundraiser because I'm going to make it known, uh, you know, the results publicly so that anybody and everybody has access also, I want to ask a question um, of you guys. If you know of somebody, I want to be very careful in how I'm wording this. If you know of somebody that has had cancer, that is battling cancer, or 
any of those types of scenarios that also was consuming prove it ketones if you would message me on instagram not because i'm going to put anything on blast i'm not going to do that it's just collecting information like i talked about it at the beginning of this live so use the funds to test more crap yeah definitely can do that we can test um you know, there are mitoplex, there are electrolytes, we can test all kinds of stuff. So yeah, I appreciate you guys. Okay, let's get through the rest of this video. Y'all are amazing. After I find out things of how they live their life and like, what's your company? Yeah, not gonna buy from them. So um, hmm. anyway, I, that's, um, I, I could ramble on and on and on. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys so much. My inbox is always open. I'm really ready to link arms with people who just want to run to the top. See, and so the whole point of this live was one for her to defend herself and two to try and recruit. And even people who are scared to try, but they know that this is the right place for them. Maybe, maybe not scared to try. Maybe you just have felt uncertain. Allow my certainty to allow my certainty to tell you you don't need to drink ketones. There's many other energy drinks out there. Many other options that are not an MLM company that prey on other people that you can use. Okay. Build more belief in yourself that you can do this. If you oh. stay committed, if you're willing to do whatever it takes within your own grasp and not forcing you to do anything, not bullying you into anything because that is not how I live my life. I want you to... to to hit the goals that you want to hit. I want you to change the life the way that you want to change your life. But if you are not willing. Oh, that's cool. If you are not willing to stay the course, if you are not willing to grow through it, if you are not willing to take the actions that I. If you're not willing to do what I tell you, you should do and go live and pack trials, even when they're not real orders from customers. It's okay. Just pack them up during the live and put them away when you're done. Nobody needs to know that they're not real orders. It's fine. If you're going to focus on the rank or the income level and not focus on the journey, you know, maybe we shouldn't work together. Girl. I tell you to take because I've walked the walk. I'm talking the talk, but I've walked the walk. I've done the stuff. If you're not willing, I can't do it for you. And I'm not going to promise you that. But if you do, magic is on the other side of it. If you Oh, my God. Apparently, she's live right now. And I think she knows about your live. Good. I hope she does. Um, also, don't send her any hate. Don't don't go in comments and do anything you know, like that. Don't do any of that. We don't do that here. OK. All right. Thank you, guys. You say yes and you stay committed. I promise you, together we can change your life as long as you commit and are willing to stay the course to ask the questions to send them to send the messages to do the work and to show up every single day we've got you you know and sometimes almost like all the buzz phrases that they say at prove it events that she just spewed out there and it comes to a point where like this isn't for me that's okay i'm gonna love you where you're at and I'm going to let you fly no matter what that looks like for you. I don't know why I said that or who needed to hear that. But so often people idea. just kind of get in their own heads and they only see what they want to see. And so I'm just telling you that you are loved here, whether you are here and inside of our community or whether you are running fast and furious. But just know you get what you focus on. And so if you focus on... The lack of, that is what you get more of. If you focus on abundance, if you focus on, I, I know that. that I'm going to figure it out. That's what you get. Focus on better. That's what you're going to continue to get. And that is what I've seen time and time again. You focus on the lack, you get more lack. Okay? So just keep that in mind. If you guys are sitting there and you're wondering, why are things not changing? Why am I not growing? Why can't I just figure out what my, where I, like, what is the reason? What is my purpose? I am just telling you that maybe you're spending too much time focusing on the fact that you don't. The way that I just sang this right now. <laughs> don't know. Versus focusing on what you actually want and desire. Sometimes we just overcomplicate things. So slow down to speed up. Pour into yourself. If you're feeling uncertain, if you're feeling like you don't have answers, and if you're feeling like I don't even know where to go first or where to start, you just gotta slow down. Gotta you gotta connect with yourself in here. 
and you have to build up the belief of self before you can believe in anyone else or anything else. Because what if we don't believe in ourself, then the feelings behind our actions, for those of you who weren't on my live last night, they're like thinking I'm crazy, but the feelings behind your actions change everything. And so if you focus on a lack I think this is very fascinating. She's talking about how you're trying to make her question herself. No, uh, that to me is screaming cognitive dissonance. And genuinely, I hope this person gets out of multi-level marketing. I genuinely hope that she steps out of the chaos and really starts to critically think. I understand completely where she's at. I've been there too. I understand what it feels like. <sighs> It's hard, you guys. It's really, really hard to work through the mental and emotional turmoil. I don't know how else to say that. It's very, very difficult. So like, I'm not upset about her saying any of that stuff about me. I'm not trying to get her to question herself at all. I'm simply giving my commentary and my insight on my experience, sp specifically with uh, proven events and, and all the stuff that I've already covered. So I don't wish this person any harm at all or anybody that's in a multi-level marketing company or anybody in general. Um, I just hope that she gets out of the MLM eventually, but she's going to have to figure that out for herself. That's not for me to, you know, I don't know. Um, also, welcome, Nikki. Welcome, welcome. Let me see some of your comments. Yeah, the cognitive dissonance hurts too much. Yeah. Yep. All right, let's finish. We're almost done, you guys. Back of the feelings behind your actions are going to create your thoughts become things. And so it's really important to connect all of them synchron synchronized and synergy. And to not allow themselves to counteract each other because then it kind of, this is how we say, like, I've said it before, people will ask, like, I didn't ask for that car accident. Well, no. But I actually had a friend, I have, I have two stories. If scientifically, there are people that like, there was like studied on, on all of these cars kept sliding off the road and hitting a pole over and over and over and over again. And every single person that they interviewed afterwards, they were like, what happened? Like, like you look at the skid marks, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. And every single one of them, they're like, what? They're like, what's the last thing that you remember before um, you hit the pole? And they're like, the last thing I remember is that all I could see was the pole. So if you look for the pole, and Tony focus Robbins on the pole, that. you're going to hit the pole. And the second thing with that, I actually had a friend who had been in, like, like had gone, like she was traveling and she was here and then she had to travel there. And like, all she wanted to do is be home. And she kept saying that in her stories over and over and over again. Like she, she actually just shared this story with me the other day. All she kept saying is like, I just want to be home. Like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. I just want to be home. Instead of like, and this is so funny because she shared with me how someone told her. She ended up going somewhere else again instead of going home. Like she did the other thing and like she kind of like fell down the stairs and like hurt herself and had like get. I agree. And I, I agree completely with this comment. No disrespect to her. But if what you're saying is bothering her, maybe it's time she took a long, hard look at her current choices and goals. Agreed completely. I think that's a very kind way of saying that as well a boot put on or whatever and someone responded to her and they said man you are a great manifester look at you huh you know if you wanted to go home you could have just booked the flight and gone home you didn't need to get your the boot on to take you home because they had to go home early and they were like How many things in my life have I manifested because I was focused on the wrong things? How many things have I manifested in my life because I focused on the wrong things? 
She was so focused on going home. That's exactly what she got. Thank you, Sarah. It was with a boot on her foot, but she got home. And how powerful is it that she was able to see that from that message? Because of who that person was, because of the relationship that they had, she was able to see it for what it was instead of thinking, how dare you? How dare you tell me I manifested this? It is not my fault. I didn't do that to myself. She didn't do that. I'm sure that the thought kind of crossed her head for a second. Because <laughs> like somebody tells you about yourself, you don't always want to hear about yourself. You know what I mean? And so. Current situation. Current situation. <laughs> when somebody tells you about yourself, you don't always want to hear what they have to say. How, I don't remember how she worded that. How often are we having things happen right, in our lives <laughs> wow. that we think are happening to us, but they're really happening for us and we ended up manifesting them. So just be cautious, be cautious of your thoughts, be cautious of your actions and be cautious really truly of what you actually focus on because you will get it. It's really important for you to shift your language, for you to shift your mindset and for you to shift the, the, the places that or the vision of where you want to go because if you're focusing on a lack of if you're focusing on what you don't have if you're focusing on the like there's something wrong with me that's what you're gonna get so i love you guys i appreciate you i know that you are powerhouses and that you can do absolutely anything that you set your mind to and so you need to be cautious of what you put into your mind and what you believe and what you put action behind and i am gonna go now i'm gonna eat some food I really appreciate you. Thank you guys for jumping on and for supporting and for commenting and even just for popping in. Even if you little stalkers aren't saying nothing, you're not even waving or commenting. I get it. Sometimes you're just engrossed in the story or you're shutting it down and walking away and listening. I still appreciate each and every single one of you so much. Um, it really means a lot to me. And my inbox is always open. Feel free to chat with me. I'm always here and I actually really love conversations, especially like that one I just told you about where, you know, you gonna tell me about myself? That's fine. You're gonna do it in a loving way so we can have a positive conversation? Let's do that. So, wow, great speaker. I love it. Me? Thank you. I appreciate that, Melvina. Melvina Rain. Wow, what a beautiful name. My daughter's name is Madeline Rain. Not spelled the same, but I really like that. So thank you guys, thank you for that. I appreciate that. And I will talk to y'all later. Chat. Okay, done with that. Thank you guys for sticking all the way through. I'm very excited. We are at 106% of the goal to get ketones tested. So I'm very excited about that. Um, as soon as the Keto Max as soon as I get them in the mail um, and and all of that stuff, I will get it sent out to the lab and I'll keep you guys updated on what's going on. I appreciate every single super chat, every donation to the, I think it's, how do you say it? Ko-Fi, I think. Uh, I think that's how you say that. And uh, I will make sure all of the information is publicly available. Yeah. If you have not already liked and subscribed, It'd be cool if you would do that. I appreciate it so much. I know this was a long live and uh, I'll see you on the next video. And just as DC says, yeah, that was twisty. <laughs> All right, guys, don't join an MLM and I'll chat with y'all later. Have a good one, everybody.